okay, let's speak Zulu. It just automat automatically happens. Through conversation. We decide to switch. So if I spoke to you first and you respond in a different language, yes. I can decide, let me accommodate you wow. and speak your language. Whether right. it's Sutu, Tswana. And just by the way, there's also chicken feet. Yeah, I know, I've seen chicken feet. So we need to try the chicken no, feet. Today. No, no. We no, must try the chicken no. feet. This is how it's portrayed. Yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, our narrative is being told by other people. Correct. That is why when it lands in the West, it lands in a wrong way. Yes, sir. What's up, beautiful people, and welcome to another episode of Don't Keep Up With, Don't Keep, Don't Keep Up With the Joneses. Don't, don't Keep Up With the, Don't Keep Up With the Joneses. Don't Keep Up With, Don't Keep, Don't Keep Up With the Joneses. Don't, don't Keep Up With the, Don't Keep Up With the Joneses. What's up, beautiful people, to another episode of the Jones Family Channel. It's me, Ricky Jones Jr., and as you can see, I am not by myself. My brother, Sofiso, is in the house. Ladies and gentlemen, you saw us ride together around various townships, such as Alexandria and Soweto, to be exact. However, now we are sitting down to have a conversation. Let's talk about South Africa. Let's talk about people moving to South Africa, but then make sure you stick to the end because Safiso has some fun things coming up in life that you want to be a part of, okay? And so without further ado, Safiso, first off, thank you for being here today, great man. It's a great pleasure, Ricky, to yes, come sir. through and thank you as well for, for the invite to yeah. this frank conversation. Yes, sir. And uh, I hope it's going to be very informative mm -hmm. and very educational, especially to our international audience yes, um, and obviously our South African audience that will contribute in the comment section. Mm -hmm. um, if there's anything that maybe perhaps I didn't say properly uh -huh. um, or that they feel that they want to add on, you know, the guys in the comment section can add. <laughs> Oh, I'm about ready to get comfortable now. This is about to be good. I can tell already. And uh, man, I have some things that I want to ask you about as well that the family has recently come in contact with. But before we get into all of that, yep. uh, could you let the people know who Safiso is? I know you're a married man. I know you have children. But then as well, like where you came from, even riding with you, talking with you, knowing that your parents uh, were ra not raised, but live in separate townships. But mm -hmm. even just help us to know who Safiso is. So is. Yeah. So I was born and raised in the east of Johannesburg um, in a township called Phosphorus. So as I had explained to you when we we're taking a drive that, um, you know, my parents had me when they were very young. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, both of them were 18 years old. Okay. So I was raised by my mother's side of the family, mm -hmm. but I would visit my dad in Soweto because my dad is from Soweto. Yes. And um, as I was obviously growing up, I was raised by my grandparents who instilled, you know, principles mm -hmm. um, and, you know, to, to live upright, you yes. know? Yes. Um, and I really appreciate that from my grandparents because mm -hmm. my mother was still young. So I took my grandfather and my grandmother um, as my parents. Okay. And um, yeah, just fast forward to 10 years. When I was 10 years old, my parents then decided that they wanted to get married. Okay. So they got married when I was 10 years old. And uh, when they got married, I stayed with both of them. Okay. But it was slightly awkward because for my formative years, when yes. I was young, I was living with my grandparents. Ah. And I used to see my dad occasionally when it was like school holidays or if there were functions, mm -hmm. uh, you know, on my dad's side of the family, I would go to Soweto and, um, you know, and be with them. Mm -hmm. But now I'm living with this man that, um, you know, I, I never really knew because for 10 years I knew my grandfather is my dad mm -hmm. and I knew my dad but part time because I just go there to visit, you know, in Soweto. Okay. And um, it was quite interesting. We stayed together. But when I was 17 years old, they separated. Oh. Um, they separated and um, I was almost done with my high school, you know, mm. um, I hadn't graduated yet in high school. And when they separated, um, you know, my brother was also, you know, born already by okay. then. Okay. And uh, so my brother and I then stayed with my mom and my dad, uh, you know, obviously he went and lived somewhere else. Okay. And it, it wasn't really a comfortable upbringing from that point on. Mm -hmm because you know my mother had to do things you know yeah. obviously alone as a yeah. single mother yeah. and mind you i was used to a household with both parents when i was still yeah. staying with my grandparents right. and the transition when i was 10 years old yeah. to staying with my dad and my mom yes. now suddenly i'm staying with the, you know with a single parent yes. and I'm staying with my mom so now as the firstborn i had to then assume 
this you know father figure in the house okay where my mom started expecting me to you know to do certain things that a father or a man in the house would do right. and i've also got my younger brother that i almost you know needed to mentor in a way okay. because he was looking up to me as Correct. a big brother just by the way there's a 10 year gap between my brother and myself wow oh, so yeah. that gap i'm a big big brother you gotcha. know i'm not just a, a big brother Correct. but i'm a big big brother Correct. so so in a way i i had to father him as well mm. and it was quite a an interesting but uh, you know, I can say it, it, it was a task or um, a way that taught me to be responsible. Okay. And um, you know, raising him, um, well, not necessarily raising him, but guiding him as he was growing up, I obviously learned how to 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 manage you know young people. Even now, as I've got kids, you know, children, <laughs> I'm able to guide them properly because I was there for my brother. You know, yeah. I was the I was the person that took him to 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 nursery school, which is kindergarten oh, wow. in, in, yeah. your, in your um, in your side of the world. Yes, sir. Primary school. Wow. I would be there taking him to primary school. Even in high school, I'd be the one that would guide him. Wow. And funny enough, you know, in South Africa, we've got this term that they use, which is deputy parent. Okay. So as a firstborn, you are almost the deputy in terms of making sure that you instill discipline to these ah, youngsters. You know, I never to your siblings. Deputy parent. Yeah, you know, if you're a firstborn and you've got siblings, yes. you become, you know, it's an automatic thing where you just assume this role of being yes. a deputy parent. So when the parents are not around, you are in charge. So True. you're basically second in charge. Okay. So I needed to discipline him. And I mean, to this day, my mother still calls me to say, your brother has done this. <laughs> your brother hasn't done this. Please call him and, you know, call him to order and, you know, things like that. So it was quite That's interesting. Cool. And um, yeah, so in terms of um, career-wise, I've been a marketer. Yes. Um, I'm very much passionate about marketing. And um, yeah, so, so as I'm here, mm -hmm. you know, having this chat with you yes. right now, um, you know, it's obviously us, you know, trying to, to, to promote your channel, but also mm -hmm. to promote the country yes. and position South Africa as a favorable destination, uh -huh. which it is. Yes, it is. No, that's so cool. I didn't even know the various parts that you just shared, which is amazing, even to your point of the deputy parent. In the States, there is that idea that the older child does assume like the parenting roles, if you will, especially mm -hmm. when the parents aren't there. However, I've never heard the term deputy parent, which I mean, I love. I love <laughs> the South African vernacular, the way that you all say things. Yeah. And one of my favorites is sorted. Like, I love yeah. that. <laughs> I'm taking that. Like, that's my sorted. I have to get this thing sorted. It's sorted, but, uh, yeah. No, I love that. So as well now, you are a father, right? Correct. You are a husband as well, mm -hmm. which of course the Jones family, we are family and we love um, families. We love marriage. We love all of that. And so if you mm -hmm. would just speak to that, um, how long have you been married? What are the ages of your children and all of that? So I took a brave decision at okay. the age of 25 yes sir just like you i was about to say my age too. I, I, I got married very young i was 25 years old when i got married mm -hmm. um you know your audience will do the maths <laughs> been, we've been married for 18 years myself okay. and my wife there this year is. 2024 will be 19 years married um so we both decided to get you know married at that age because we felt it was right at the yes. time yep. and um we've got three uh, daughters mm -hmm. First born is 18, um, second is 14, okay. and the last one is six. Ooh. So there's this huge a gap. <laughs> it's a huge gap. Look, uh, my wife and I, you know, we were negotiating. Should we try for a boy? You know, oh, should we try for a son okay. or not? Uh -huh. She was feeling, hmm, you know, I think I'm done with these two girls. You know, we have mm -hmm. daughters. But something in me, because in the African culture, We've got this thing that, you know, with surnames, we want to continue the legacy of okay. the surname. You yes, know, sir. as a Kumalo, I wanted to continue the legacy of wow. the Ndumwa clan, you know, the Kumalo clan. Yes. Um, so I said to my wife, you know, let's try and, uh, you know, let's try for a boy, you know. Okay. And she was like, nah, you know, we old now, let's enjoy <laughs> our life. We, we're managing well with these two girls, you know. Aren't you satisfied with these daughters? And I said, look, I'm happy. Yeah. God has blessed me with two beautiful daughters. I'm mm -hmm. happy. They're healthy. But something in me still said, give it just one last try. Of course. So it took us eight years. Yes, yes. <laughs> to really decide, okay, let's try again. Okay. You know? 
Lo and behold, we try again, yep. and it's a girl. It's a girl. However, the way I look at it, you know, it's for me, I think it's a blessing having daughters mm, because when daughters are older, they tend to take care of their parents. Yes, they do. Number two, I felt, you know, God God trusts me with, with, with girls. Hello. So it means I'm a great guy. Oh, you know? oh that's what I like. <laughs> If you have so many daughters, it yes. means God trusts you okay. that you can take care of females. There it is. Um, so I'm the only male in the house with four females. Four females, daily. That is how hectic it is in that household. <laughs> that household is something oh. else. So I stay in my little corner, watch my television, my program, sports. <laughs> They'll make noise and do whatever they do, whether it's in the kitchen or the other lounge. Oh. But yeah, yes. so I'm surrounded by females, but I really, really feel blessed. Yes, you are. Why you're blessed. And so I love that. But then I got to know, what is it like leaving the house? So let's say you have plans to be somewhere at 1 o'clock. What is that like? Is this 1 o'clock a.m. or the p.m.? p.m. <sighs> <laughs> Look, you know because you're married. Yes. Wherever you go, you have to inform your partner. Mm -hmm. And um, look, there is flexibility. It's not like we're in jail or anything. Yes. They like to be informed. Uh huh. So, so you know, I would obviously prep my wife and yes. say, look, I've got an appointment, mm -hmm. whether tomorrow, the following week, or even today. And I'm talking about all of you all, like the oh, whole family, yeah, yeah. the whole family. <laughs> Whoa, look. Now I'm talking about the whole. The, the, the good thing, Rick, is yes. that the youngest is young. Okay. So it's 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 not like we need a, a seven seater or a big car to yes. travel. Mm -hmm. um, the cars that we have are well, they're currently okay. sufficient. Yes. You know the load that we have is not that bad because the youngest is still quite small. I mean, yes. she's only six years old. Yes, sir. And um, she's you know she's not too tiny, but she she, she manages to sit in the middle in the, center, in yes. the back. So for now it's still fine, but yes. I, I see that perhaps maybe in future uh -huh. I will need to, to invest in a bigger car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then there's that, but I'm talking about like being on time. So in our household, there's only four. It's two men, oh, two women. Goodness. And the amount of, hey y'all, we're on the way. I apologize, we might be like 10 minutes, 15 minutes behind. You know, so that's the norm. However, you have four other women in the house. So, so, so you lucky. You've only got two. Well, <laughs> I don't think Rain has to put on makeup. No, no, but, no. But in my case, my wife has to put on makeup. Okay. She my, chooses to. She doesn't have to. She doesn't have to. That's it. But usually, when we go like to a special occasion, right, you know, she right. wants to put on makeup. Of course. You know, not, not, not a lot. Not but you know, she still needs. Yeah, she yeah. still needs to go and you know look at the mirror. Yes. My firstborn, because she's eighteen, she's at that age where she's concerned. And she's very much aware of how she should look when she goes into the public space. Okay. My second born, she's into that stage now. She's 14 years old. She's a teenager. Okay. So she's also the one that will go and try and get makeup, make sure that her hair looks great. She wants to do the, the little curved things oh, yeah, on the yeah, hair. The edges. The edges. Yes, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. they call them. I don't even know what the terms are. <laughs> but, but, but I'm learning all these things through these teenage girls yeah, and yeah. my wife. Yes. But to your point and to your question, we normally don't keep time. Purely oh. because of that. You okay. know with us men, you just brush your hair, you wear whatever, that's you want to wear. You don't go through the, you know, the closet in your terms, the correct, wardrobe. We call correct. it a wardrobe. Going through all these clothes and deciding, should I wear this? Nah, it's not going to look good with this stuff. We just go to the wardrobe, the closet. Yes. We grab whatever we grab. Yes. We wear, we brush our hair, and we go. Yeah. So in most cases, I'm the one waiting for them to, to uh -huh. finish, you know, dressing mm -hmm. up. The youngest is not there as yet, yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah. you know, because she's still young. But the right. other three ladies in the house, yeah, yeah. Um, we're normally not on time. There it is. With most appointments. There it is. And so my prayers, just so you know, my prayers would be with you as you go out and do various things, <laughs> that patience will arise, and that, you know, that fruit of the Spirit will be evident in your life and in your ways. Because I could only imagine, like, when mm -hmm. I know of fathers that has a lot of women in their household, mm -hmm. like, that's the first thought mm -hmm. I could think of. Mm -hmm. Like, what is it like to leave, <laughs> to go to somewhere at a set time, whether it's church or yeah. dinner? But, yeah. you know, you handle that well. Well, and I even love how you speak to the various differences in the words that we use, right? You mm -hmm. said we say wardrobe and you as Americans we say closet. And yeah. so that lets me know you're aware of the differences that we yeah. have. And even to that, like what is it like for you being a South African knowing that there are a lot of Americans and others from around the world that are looking to move to the country of South Africa? What does that do for you? Like what goes on in your mind seeing that take place yeah. 
Ricky, I must say, it really makes us proud as South Africans. Okay. I know a lot of South Africans feel the same way. Yeah. We, we tend to criticize our country quite a lot. Yes. Um, we do have issues like any other country. True. But, you know, when you get chosen as a country of choice, mm. for people that we perceive to be coming from first world countries and yes. countries that are well developed, yes. we feel very, very proud. Uh -huh. And I think it also puts pressure on us as South Africans to really, you know, keep our country at the top. You know, mm -hmm. I know that in the continent, you know, most countries look up to us. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I wouldn't necessarily say we are the best country on the continent, okay. but they do look up to us because there's a lot of things that we're doing right. Yes. But it also validates us mm -hmm. that, you know, if other countries outside of the continent are saying, hey, South Africa looks like a, a suitable destination for us, to you know to go and live there mm -hmm. not only to visit but yes. to permanently move there yeah to us it's a blessing mm -hmm. it's the same as when you've got visitors and every time they give you a call they want to come and visit when ah. you have to get together with your friends they're like no ricky we want to come to your house uh -huh, uh -huh. it then validates you that you know your house is comfortable ah. it's conducive yeah um, maybe for for hosting people mm -hmm. um and also just to make people feel comfortable to be in your space mm -hmm. it's a great feeling to have mm -hmm. so i'd like to speak to you know, um, the Americans and, you know, some of the people from other countries, whether it be Europe, South mm -hmm. America or Asia, mm -hmm. that South, South Africa is a really good destination. We've got yeah. a great country. Um, it offers everything, um, you know, from, you know, your climate, we've yep. got nice climate. It's not too hot. It's not too cold. That is true. Uh, in terms of amenities, you know, you've got malls. Yeah. Um, you've got a whole lot of other things to do, as you've documented yes, um, yes. on your channel. But also from a tourism point of view, you know, we are a multiple country in one. You can go to the beach. That's true. You can uh, go to the bush. Yep. What you guys call safari. Yes. You know, um, if, if you like the nightlife, mm -hmm. I mean, we've got a lot of, you know, places Options. which... Yeah, there's a lot of options yeah, if you yeah, want yeah. to go clubbing, if you're that type of person. Correct. So, so there's quite a lot. I mean, um, mm -hmm. the list is, is, is not exhaustive. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that, you know, one can do. But... As I said, this country is very beautiful mm -hmm. um, and it offers quite a lot. Mm -hmm. You will not know until you move here or until you visit this country to really appreciate what this country offers. So I'm saying to, you know, um, you know whether it's Americans or mm -hmm. Europeans, Asians, South Americans that would like to visit, yeah that come to this country and visit. There it is. No, well said. Look at you, Mr. Margaret. I love it. I hear it. I hear it coming out. I, and I love to. it. I love that. And even to the marketing side of things, like what's a beautiful space or a place of South Africa that you're like, man, um, Ricky or Dr. Saad or any mm -hmm. other people that may be visiting or looking to move that you would recommend for them to check out or to see that you have even experienced here in South Africa? I mean Sun City. I know okay. that you spoke about Sun City. Yes. Sun City is one of them that yes. you can try. The Lion Park. Mm -hmm. if, if you don't want to do a full safari experience, um, you can do you know, the Lion Park, which is mm. just 45 minutes away from, yes. from where we are. Um, there's quite a lot. Um, you know, some of them escaped my mind, mm -hmm. but there's quite a lot. I mean, you right. can even go to the coast. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can go to Durban, Cape Town. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, you, you never ever really speak about other provinces. It's mostly okay. Durban, yes. Cape Town, right, right. And obviously Joburg. Right. We do have, if you go to the Free State, it's another province. Okay. You know, there's the Kimberley Hall, which is okay. another, uh, you know, it, it, it's a nice feature, mm. which is man made, by the way. It's a okay. mine where they've dug a hole so deep. When you look at it, you'll think it was excavated by machines. Really? But it was human. So it's quite interesting when you go there and you see how the hole is so deep and realize that human beings actually dug up that hole. Wow. So it's another tourist attraction. Okay. Which is in a different province. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. so, so as I said, there's quite a lot. Right. Um, uh, you're right. I mean, there's options. I mean, because even as you're, you're right, we mainly talk about the big three, I'll call it, right? Joburg, yeah. Cape Town, and Durban. However, there's also Port Elizabeth where they have beaches Correct. and things like that as well. But even to your point, there's other provinces where it will allow you to have an, a different experience. Correct. Right? Another experience, a different experience, and interact with various peaceful people. Mm -hmm. And so I love that. So even as well, as you going back, Right, because mm -hmm. I, I remember something that as you were talking, yeah. so having a son, you will be able to continue the legacy of your yes. name, right? So, but then you also are from a tribe, as I understand. Yep. Okay, so what tribe are you from? So it's an ethnic group slash ethnic tribe. Group. Thank yeah. you. 
So as you know, we've got 11 official languages. Yes. And in those 11, there are different ethnic groups. So I'm from the Zulu ethnic group. Okay. Yeah. Well, it, it is a tribe. You can also call it a tribe. What's the difference? Like, help me to understand the difference because, you know, from the States, we do have the understanding that it's tribe. However, coming over, I was like, ah, it just, it just didn't feel right. Saying like, what mm -hmm. tribe are you from? Yeah. Like, it just felt weird. Yeah. So I did see in the comments, hey, you should say ethnic group. So <laughs> thank you for reminding me what was said and what I yeah. should have said. Yeah. But like, what's the difference between ethnic group and a tribe? To, to me, you yes. know, um, it's, it's similar. Um, okay. When you say tribe or ethnic group, because yes, it's sir. a grouping of people that share similar attributes, mm. characteristics, maybe even skin, you know, color, yes, behaviors. Um, so when we say Zulu, we speak the same language. Mm. Uh, we come from the same area. Okay. Um, so, so ethnic group and tribe, to me, it's, it's just one of the same things. Okay. Okay. Um, maybe it's just semantics. Yes. Um, but we, we normally use ethnic groups. Okay. I think tribe probably tends to sound primitive a little okay. bit. Okay. When you say tribe, it's like, you right. know, you're living in the sticks, you know, in the bushes. Right. Like, it's tribe. It definitely but, has that vibe. But, but with tribe, I mean, it's just, as I said, people that share, you know, commonalities. Yes. Um, you know, even language, especially language, because that's how you identify okay. your tribe. Yes. Or your by ethnic group. You by the language that you speak. Um, but there's other characteristics okay. that would be similar between, um, you know, different people within the same mm -hmm. tribe or mm -hmm. within the same um, ethnic group. Okay. So my ethnicity is, um, is Zulu. Mm, and so let me ask this. If you're growing up, right, and you're out and about, do what's, because I, I love just learning from South Africans and learning from other people in general, would you, as a South African, go to another or see another South African and say, hey, what ethnic group are you from? Or would you first start off by speaking their language to see if they speak the language and then have an idea of, okay, maybe not Zulu, uh, maybe another one, so I'll speak another language. Like, how would you, as a Zulu South African, be able to know when you're talking amongst another ethnic group? So that's a very interesting question because okay. I know that some people mistaken you as a South African as well. Yes, so, which I admire. I love that. Every time it happens. I hate it when I say, look like one of us. Right. So, so what we do is, if I go into a public space yes. and I see another person of the same race as me, okay. I'll just speak Zulu. Okay. The assumption is, if you're South African, you would understand Zulu. Okay. If they respond to me, let's say in Sutu, I can then decide to switch to their language to accommodate them yes. or they can switch to my language and speak Zulu with me. Okay. But also through, let's say the accent, because you, you do get different accents, even okay. though a person can speak Zulu, uh -huh. but they are Sutu, you can pick up with the accent that no, this person is not Zulu, they are okay. Sutu, then I can decide to accommodate them. Uh -huh. That is the beauty of South Africa is that most people can speak about three to four languages True. or more yes. of other ethnic groups. Yes within South Africa. Mm -hmm. um, with myself, I mean, I speak Zulu, I speak Sutu, I speak Tswana, a little bit of Pedi. Okay. Um, my wife is from Swaziland, so I can speak Siswati, okay. which is another thing, by the way. Perhaps maybe this is where the differences are, the ethnic groups and the tribe. Okay. Because in South Africa, we've also got the Nguni group. Okay. So I don't know whether to call it a tribe or call it an ah. ethnic group, but within the Nguni group, You've got Kosa, you've got Zulu, you've got Siswati, and you've got Ndebel. Oh. So the language structure is almost the same, the dialect is just a bit different. Mm, that's so I can speak Siswati because Siswati is almost like Zulu, okay. but slightly different here and there. Okay. Um, you know, because it's obviously a different dialect. But right. I, can, I can fully understand um, what a Swati person is saying. Mm. But as I said, even with Sutu, Sutus also have their own grouping with okay. Northern Sutu, Southern Sutu, ah. um, and they also have Tswana within the uh, within that group. Wow! And so that's awesome in itself. How there are groups, but then there's subgroups within the group, Correct. right? And so that's amazing. But then you can also get lost at the same time. Correct. But it's something that you learn over time, yeah. and as you interact and grow. Um, in the knowledge of meeting with different people, mm -hmm. then you're able to understand, okay, boom, yeah. boom, 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 boom. But I even love how, like you said, if I, if you were to speak in Zulu first mm -hmm. and maybe they don't speak or maybe they do, but it's up to 
the people having the conversation Correct. to decide which, which English, language, which language, language are we going to use in yeah. this conversation. That's amazing. And the interesting thing is we don't decide, okay, let's speak Zulu. It just automat automatically happens. Through conversation. We decide to switch. So if I spoke to you first and you respond in a different language, yes. I can decide, let me accommodate you and wow. speak your language, whether right. it's Sutu, Tswana, um, I don't know Chivenda, but you can speak other languages. It's not only Zulus and Sutus, mm -hmm. there's other languages. But if I do know your language and I'm comfortable in conversing with you in that language, then I can do that. Yeah. But the other interesting thing, uh, Ricky, yes. is that I don't need to switch to your language. Okay. You can continue speaking in your language, whether you're speaking Sutu, oh. um, you know, uh, I know what you or you're speaking closer, I can still stick to my Zulu, but we will have a proper conversation without having to switch to each other's to the languages. Language. You don't necessarily have to accommodate the other person. I think, you know, obviously with the concept of Ubuntu, you know, we always try to make the other person feel comfortable. Okay. So you sometimes feel in a way a bit obliged to speak the other person's language. Yes. And, um, you know, just to try and accommodate them. Yeah. You then speak their language, but you don't have to. Because in South Africa, if you're a true South African, you have to at least know about three, four languages. Yes. Um, even if you can't converse in them, but at least understand what the other person is saying. Because with some languages, I cannot respond in their language, okay. but I can understand what the person is saying to me in their language. <laughs> and then I'm able to respond in my language, and hopefully they can also understand what I'm saying. So th this is the beauty of, of this country, you know, the oh, diversity yeah. that we have with 11 official languages yes. and sign language being the 12 official mm. language which was declared last year in 2020. Wow. Um, I'm always amazed, right? I'm sure you would hear me say in the videos how it's the people, it's the people, it's the people of South Africa. However, you all always never cease to amaze me and who you all are like mm -hmm. just to even fathom the thought that there could be a conversation taking place mm -hmm. between two people and two different languages are being used by both people mm -hmm. and we're still having this conversation i it doesn't happen in america that's mm -hmm. that's just not yeah. what's taking place there yeah. right and i say that to say it's something that I'm even just trying to like, okay, I heard what was said yeah. and just try to process what was being said at the same time. But it, man, that's amazing. Really amazing. So when did you all learn these languages? Now granted, in school mm -hmm. now the kids, our kids are in school and they are learning um, Afrikaans and mm -hmm. Zulu. So mm -hmm. that is what is taught right now, but then they're able to learn others as Other well. Languages, yeah. So it's like, is it in school? Is everybody learning this in school or is it just in interacting with people as you live life? Yeah, so it's both. Um, okay. At school, um, you know, when I was growing up, in our days you had to do uh, English as okay. a first language and you do Afrikaans as a second language, okay. but you also would have a choice to do one of the other African languages, whether it be nice. Zulu, depending whether your school also offers other African languages, okay. you can do that. But I think the most learning takes place within the communities where we live. I agree. Remember when we, take, when we took a drive to Soweto, I said, Soweto is, in, is an amalgamation of different townships yes. put in one. Yes. Within those townships, you'll find there's Tongas, there's vendors in one part of the township. Okay. There's Zulus in one part of the township. And there's Sutus in other you know, parts of the township. Mm. So, so you, you'll find, you go to Mdeni. Uh, Mdeni is one of the townships within Soweto, they speak okay. Zulu. Huh. You'll go to, to Mapetla, Piri. They mostly Tswana slash Sutu, you know, wow. um, that, 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 they, that, that they speak. Yes. So, so, so Shawela, for example, is Chivenda. Okay. Um, they'll speak Venda or Tsonga. Mm -hmm. So within the different townships within, you know, our communities, mm -hmm. we interact with other ethnic groups and we live in harmony. Yes. Um, but the, right there, when we're young, because your mind is still, you know, very fluid yes. in absorbing, yep. um, you know, it's different like information. It's a sponge. Yes. So you learn these languages as you grow. It doesn't necessarily mean that you'll be fluent, okay. but at least you can understand. Mm. And with that understanding, as you grow, you obviously then are able to converse with people from other, you know, um, ethnic groups right. that speak different languages. Yes. Wow. Yes. That's amazing. So even not only is language being picked up, but even each ethnic group has their own culture and the Correct. way of doing life and having meaning and eating and things like that. So what was that life like as 
you know, living in the township or mm -hmm. maybe you have friends that have talked about it, but like, what was that like being in the midst of so many different cultures, so many different groups of people, but yet together at the same time? Like, I can only imagine. <laughs> I'm even trying to just say like, what would that be like for me? Which So for you, what, what was that like? So, so, so Ricky, when you live in those spaces, you're not necessarily conscious conscious yeah. um, you just coexist with other ethnic groups yes in a township setup if we living with friends that speak Sutu, uh, Zulu, Kosa you just converse you just coexist without really being you know conscious conscious okay that oh this person is Sutu oh okay they have a different culture no especially when you're living in a similar space mm. in in townships um, you know it's it's not as very traditional as your if you go to the homelands, you know, okay. some parts of KwaZulu Natal, some parts of Limpopo, some parts of the Northwest, and even in the Eastern Cape, they still, you know, practice the very traditional, traditional okay. um, ways of, of their ethnic group. Yeah. But in the township, we almost live like we are in the city, you okay. know. So as I said, we coexist. In terms of culture, we adopt the, the, the township culture. Uh -huh. Yes, your parents may impart you know, your Zulu culture, your Kosa culture, your Sutu or your Tswana, your Chivenda culture, at home. Mm -hmm. And you know that in terms of the food, the type of food that your ethnic group eats or yes. consumes, this is how we prepare pap, for example. I know okay. that you were yep, yep, referring yep. to pap the other time yes, on your well. video. Mm -hmm. you don't, the meat, how do we prepare meat as Zulus or as Sutus or mm -hmm. as Kosas? But when we grow up as kids, you learn to just coexist with other ethnic groups and you don't really have you know explicit cultural differences because you're all living in the same space okay. you share the same interests okay. and you do things in a similar way mm -hmm. um, although you are different especially from a household point of view wow and so would you say like that's a township mindset because i asked with the idea that mm -hmm. maybe it's the american thought However, when I hear the various tribes or ethnic groups, right, respectfully, mm -hmm. all together in a space, there could be some divisions and strifes because of the differences of the various ethnic groups. And so my thought is like maybe sometimes there's frictions, there's fightings between the groups. However, what it sounds like is if we're in this township together, we're here together. And though we may have differences understood at home, mm -hmm. but once we come out of the home, we're one mm -hmm. under this township living or whatever whatnot so was there any tensions between ethnic groups as you were growing up no not really you know the concept of ubuntu i know that yes. you mentioned it quite a lot in your channel yes sir so with the concept of ubuntu we've learned to you know to coexist That's to beautiful. live together in harmony like any other community there will be frictions here and there yes but we don't have frictions based on ethnic groups within the townships That's as beautiful. i said to you earlier that you know townships such as Soweto you find that there's different parts of the township where they speak different languages yes they are of a different ethnic group okay but we all learn to coexist mm. um, but as I said if there are tensions it will be minor things but it's not something that will really cause an uproar where there's civil wars and stuff like that yes. I mean it's it, it would be things that are really really minor yeah, yeah. Um, you know even from a political sphere mm. maybe there could be slight you know triggers to have you know you know ethnic you know uh, tensions between different ethnic okay. groups but i can tell you that we live in harmony we, yeah. we we don't really have civil wars in south africa this okay. is a very peaceful country wow um and as i said it brings it back to ubuntu that you are because i am and we've learned to really respect each other i mm -hmm. respect your culture yes. as a, a different ethnic group yeah. you also respect mine and we learn to coexist in that way. Yeah. So this is one of the beautiful things about South Africa, the diversity that we have, whether it be diversity in race or diversity in ethnic groups, we've learned to coexist together. We've got our challenges, yes, like any other country. Any other country. However, in this country, we keep it together. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that. And even to the diversity of cultures, right? Me being American and you being Zulu, right? So first off, you invited me to a 
the bola, the bola, yeah. bola right? Yeah. Which I appreciate that. I am so thankful for that. And in leading up to it, talking to Dr. Yeah. Sai, because we both received the invite, I was like, oh man, like, what are you wearing? He was like, oh, I'm getting this like <laughs> Zulu out. And I was like, wait, what? I didn't know to get an outfit, so let yeah. me just try to figure it out. So, shouts out to my brother Homo, who was like, who went with me. Yes. I said, hey, brother, yes. I need help to try to find this outfit <laughs> for this Lobola. He was yeah. like, oh, tell me about it yeah. and who's getting married. I was like, I don't know. I was just invited. <laughs> but thankfully, in yeah. the invitation, there was a photo yeah. of the uh, husband, well, the man and the, the woman. Yeah. And so I showed him the picture. He was like, oh, they look like zoos. I was like, man, like, yeah. I don't even know how you picked that up from yeah. a photo, but if you know, you yes. know. Yes. Right? And then so trying to figure out outfits. Uh, you happened to wear an outfit that I was going to wear, but she didn't have, well, the store didn't have yes. my size. Yes. And so, shouts out to you for that. I appreciate that. Y'all have to check out that video to see what I'm talking about. <laughs> However, going to the Lobola, yeah. I was able to experience something that, one, I would have never experienced, mm -hmm. you know, outside of the invitation mm -hmm. because we don't have such a process in the States mm -hmm. as you all do mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. um, however, Culturally speaking, like what's that process like the Lobola? Let's mm -hmm. just talk about the Lobola right now, which I've talked to various people after that because I was fascinated. I was like, whoa, yeah. this is a process. Yeah. And so like, what's the process of the Lobola for my American family that's yes. watching that may get the opportunity to come in contact with yeah. it? However, if they don't, this would be educational for them. Yeah, so I like the fact that you're asking questions to help you understand our culture yes sir. because in part of you trying to immerse yourself in our culture you you first have to be educated informed yes, yes. so that you know mm -hmm. even the way you carry yourself mm -hmm. um, or behave yes when we in different settings yes. you would know because you would have been educated yes so with regards to the process you know answering your question so i would obviously ask a girl out okay and uh, we start dating okay when we're ready I would then, as a man, send a letter to the girl's parents. This is written or digital? This is written. Okay. But lately, I mean, they do it digitally. You just type a letter, you send it. So it's, it's a letter of intention. So you are, you, you are showing intention to the family that um, you've seen their daughter and you are intending you know, okay. to, to marry them. So, so when you send that letter of intention, um, the family, you know, the girl's family then obviously has to acknowledge that, okay, we accept, we've received the letter firstly, and having read the letter, we accept that there's somebody that is interested in our daughter. We open our doors now for you guys as a family to come and have uh, an engagement with us. Whoa, 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 wait a minute, okay. I, Ricky, yes. I'm putting in my, how I would have walked these steps out <laughs> with Crystal. Crystal. So <laughs> I, Ricky, met Crystal. I met her and I'm like, man, I want to marry her. I would send a letter to her parents. Yes. They would receive the letter. Mm -hmm. And then upon receiving the letter and accepting yeah. the opportunity yes. or the possibility for yes. what her and I could be, yes. they would then invite my whole family I'll into explain their... That. Okay. So, 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 so when you send a letter, it's still a letter of intention? Yes. Now, the girl's family, I mean, it's, it's their discretion. If they feel their daughter is not ready to get married, they can, you know, decline and say, our daughter is not yet ready to go that route to, to get married. Maybe she's still at school. They would like her to finish her degree or whatever the case may be. There's still achievements that she needs to achieve. However, with this example, let's assume that they say, yes, yes. You know, our daughter is ready. We are quite happy to meet the Jones family. Okay. So now the Jones family would then gather uncles, um, some of the elders, to go and visit Crystal's family. Now, this what? visit is where you're now going to negotiate with Crystal's family that you would like to take her as your wife. So when you get to Crystal's family... Oh, hold on, what's okay. that? Because that's a strong, so I'm big on words. And I, <laughs> and I know the power and the impact of words. Mm -hmm. You said... My family, the elders, the uncles and all, would come and we would negotiate. Yes. What is that? Unpack, negotiate. Um, okay, maybe let's unpack the word Lobola first. Okay. What, what is the concept of Lobola? Yes, so sir. Lobola in the olden days, as you know, black people in South Africa, it was a way of showing appreciation, mm -hmm. you know, from the groom's family, so the guy's family, showing appreciation to the girl's family 
that you're giving us your daughter to be part of our family. So in the olden days, there were cows, you know, you'd, yes. you'd use cows, you know, okay. paying cows in kind to say thank you very much. This is just the token of appreciation. You're not, you're not buying a girl. Okay. This is not a commercial transaction. Okay. It's just building friendships and you, 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 you're basically saying we are becoming one family. Yes. So we would like to, you know, build this relationship with this new family, this yes. newfound family. Yes. Um, and in a, in a process, we'd also just like to show appreciation to, wow. to the girl's family okay. because they're handing over their daughter mm -hmm. um, to belong to the Jones family, yes. in your example. Yeah. So then the Jones family would pay cows, back in those days, they would yeah. pay cows to, to Crystal's family. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously in recent times, we, we don't have cows right. that we use yes. to, 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 to pay the appreciation. Yes. In fact, I don't like to use the word pay. pay. Yes. It's more of just honor. showing and honoring. Yeah. Um, because I think a lot of people think, um, especially from the Western world, they think we are buying a wife. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you talk about Lobola, you have okay. to pay a certain amount, but it's, it's not the case. It's right. just honoring. No, it's family. honor. It's honor. Yes. I recognize upon the first visit and experience mm -hmm. of it, it's honoring. Yeah. And because of the various ways of it, which, you know, I'm not going to jump in too much, but again, mm -hmm. so, okay, my uncles come. Yes. And elders come. Mm -hmm to the household of mm -hmm. my of Crystal and her parents and, and yes. how do we go from there? So Crystal's family would set a date mm -hmm. um, where they also have the elders from Crystal's side to yes. be present at the negotiations. Once the date has been set, then your family gets invited. You come through on that particular date that was set. Yes. You get to Crystal's household. Just by the way, when you get to Crystal's household, Crystal won't be in the room. It depends. Some cultures, the girl sits in the negotiation. I know with the Swati culture, okay. when I was, uh, you know, honoring my wife's um, family, okay. my wife was there to listen in uh, on how her family is negotiating for Lobola with my family. But in some cultures yeah. in South Africa, the girl will not be present during the negotiation. Mm. In fact, what they will do is when you come with your family, they will even ask during the negotiation, they'll have different ladies that they'll line up. In fact, they'll just sit, maybe her sisters and maybe they'll include a, a female cousin. Yes. And they'll ask your family, which of these girls are you coming to negotiate for? Huh. So then you obviously, as, as the guy that's yes. coming here to, to, you know, to, to, to take this bride, Correct. you will say, that is the lady that we came here for. Okay. We would use the word imbali. That's okay. a rose. Okay. So you'll say na imbali, eh, um, you know, Crystal's obviously family. Yes. And then Crystal's family would then acknowledge that, oh, okay, so this is the girl that you came here for. Um, and then you guys will say yes. And then, you know, during the conversation and the negotiation, they will then state that this child, this is what she's done, this is how we raised this child. Um, and there's different things that are being used during the, the, the Lobola negotiation. Right. Um, you know, to, to say, we feel that we should be um, not necessarily compensated, but right. be honored, honored by this much yes. because we had to put our daughter through school. Mm -hmm. We had to do this for her. Mm -hmm. She's also maybe working and she's contributing within the household. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes maybe she's even a breadwinner at home. Mm -hmm. So when you marry her, you're removing that breadwinner mm -hmm. from that household. So you need to somehow honor them for that. Okay. Um, that this was a lady that was taking care of the family. She was mm -hmm. responsible um, and so forth. Right. Oh my goodness. And so even like you said, they line up maybe the sisters. Is it, I know it's not a game, right? But yeah. like, what is it just to, what's that part for? This is, this is just to make sure that you are clear um, okay. as to who this lady is. Because especially if she's got, you know, girl siblings, yes. you know, sisters. Yes. Um, I mean, it could be any of them. So you need to be clear and say, no, no, no. We came to that. We came for this lady here. You can okay. even call her by her name and okay. say, we came for Crystal. But it's in the letter, right? Is it in the letter? It's just, it's just part of the culture. It's a part of it. Okay. Remember, you know what Crystal looks like. Yes. Your family has probably seen Crystal in photos. Correct. Maybe she's even been to your house. Yes. But it's part of the culture. Okay. You know, we take it back to, we want to officially 
um, you know, acknowledge that yes. you are here for Crystal, okay. not for her sisters or any other lady within this household, yes. but you are here for, for Crystal. Okay, man. And then right there, once your family is clear that this is the lady that we came to negotiate mm -hmm. um, for, depending which culture, she either remains in the room or she leaves the room, and yes. then you continue with the negotiation. So were you nervous during this process? Very nervous, <laughs> very nervous. Because Ricky, I can tell you now, these days, I am not sure if I'll be able to, um, see, using English, you yes, know, so. when we say afford, okay. right, it, it, right. it will seem as if I'm buying the right. but no, I'm not we buying. Get it. it's, it's, yeah. a, it's a way of honoring yep. the person mm -hmm. that you're um, marrying mm -hmm. and the family that you are taking her from, in mm -hmm. essence. So, no, I get it. I get it. I know what you're saying, and hopefully they will make the translation from purchasing buying or yes. whatever to honoring and so correct yeah the prices are high now. it's very important to use the right term you are yes. not buying a girl no nope. you are not paying for a girl correct you are just showing appreciation yeah it's just a token of appreciation and honor mm -hmm. to the girl's um, family yeah. and you are just saying thank you yeah. and part of that is just to build this friendship and this um, family relationship between the, 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 the two families. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so you were nervous, so you were there during the negotiations. I was there. Okay, who's negotiating? Is it you to the father? Is it elder to elder? Who's talking? So maybe let's take a step back. So I would brief my uncles okay. or the elders that would be negotiating on my behalf. Mm -hmm. I would obviously tell them who this lady is. Um, and we would talk, you know, obviously, you know, what she does and all of that, so that up front they know what they might be faced with in terms of questions and what the girl's family might put on the table that we had to educate this child or she's a breadwinner. So those are the things that I need to tell her. Another important thing is how she carried herself. Yes. So whether she's a virgin right, or not, mm -hmm. that matters in the negotiations okay. as well. So those are the type of things that I'd need to brief the elders on my side of the family before we go to the girl's family yes so that they know and they're aware so that when they get there on the back pockets they can you know be able to respond and say ah we are aware of that um and with our thinking this should either matter or it shouldn't matter for these reasons wow so when you go there as you just asked whether i was nervous or not yes you you, you become nervous as a guy because um some negotiations don't end in a positive way. Oh. Sometimes you go there negotiating, but you find that the girl's family, you know, the, the, the honor that you'd like to honor them with, to them it's not sufficient. Okay. And sometimes the negotiation can break down um, and not necessarily have a favorable outcome. Okay. Um, and then you as, as the guy's family have to go back um, and, and, and get your story right in terms of this is what they wanted. Okay. Are we ready to, to give them what they want now or should we wait another while, whether it's months or a year or whatever, wow. and then go back? Okay. Unfortunately, some families end up not going back, depending. Um, but I mean, obviously, if you really and truly love this lady, you would make sure that mm -hmm. whatever the... Oh, I, I don't like using these English right, terms right, when you right. say demands, you know, right, right. That what, whatever they were expecting yes. on their side, yes. if you couldn't meet it, you go back mm. and uh, you go back to the drawing board, you come up with a plan to meet, you know, those requirements that they had and then you go back at a, at a later stage, wow. um, you know, to go and renegotiate. Wow. But if things go well, right there, yes. you said, um, you know, after paying Lobola, in our tradition, you you basically married now. Okay. okay. So it's not like in the Western world where there has to be a white wedding. Mm -hmm. Once you've paid Lobola, you are now official to the girl's family. Okay. And in your family, the girl is official that she is now the daughter of our family, the mm -hmm. newfound daughter in this family. Okay. Okay. It's just that, you know, obviously we then extend it to where we start planning the white wedding okay. um, in the Western way yes. so that we can, you know, really officially, you know, especially to benefit you know the community so that officially they know that now crystal is now married to you know to ricky okay but once you've paid lobola right there she's yours 
Right. You Man. belong with each other. Okay. And so the one that we went to, they had the negotiation, but then there was like a ceremony with other people around. So mm -hmm. sometimes they will uh, bring the two type ceremonies together, or yeah. is that how lobolas usually are? Because it was a lot of people yeah. at that celebration or the lobola. So it's not always in the same way. Okay. Um, so the way we did it is that we did the lobola in the morning and then okay. in the afternoon, because the yard is nice and big and the kids wanted to just complete the process right okay. there and there, we then had the pastor that was there, you know, yes. um, that really blessed the, the rings, the way, the, mm -hmm. the, you know, the, the union, the union, yep. the union um, and it was just done in one day. Okay. So you can decide um, with your partner yes. that do you want to just do the lobola process first, complete that and then plan for an event of celebrating your union or you can on the same day just like we did in the morning the family of you know the the the, the groom yes. comes yep. they negotiate then at some point once the negotiations are done then um, you decide let's just go and celebrate with our loved ones you know yeah. close family and friends that have been invited and let's just celebrate this new union yeah no yeah no i will i will run it that way because this is like I could only imagine the amount of stress and <laughs> just anxiety and just like it's like a build up of emotions yes. and thoughts because here you are love or in love with the woman that is the oh my gosh like <laughs> Oh, so is it my last question with it all because I have so many like we could do a whole episode on that by itself Like whose money is it that is being used to honor the Wife's family is it the grooms or is it the family in totality? So what I was asked what they asked me my family that is is Sifiso are you ready to to build a family, okay. you know? Normally, you would obviously have to have an income because yes. you need to now start a new family, look after this Correct. family. Yes. Especially since you are taking a girl from her household mm -hmm. or from her family where she was probably comfortable and you're saying, come and stay with me, let's start a new family. Yes. And if you don't have income to afford her a certain lifestyle, it's going to be a problem. Yes. So your elders would ask you, Ricky, are you sure you're ready to walk down this route and, and start a family? Mm. And you'd say, mom, dad, yes, I am ready. I'm working. I have an income. And I think I'm at an age where I'm responsible enough to raise a family and okay. take care of my new wife. Okay. And it depends. I mean, some families help the, 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 the boy yes. and the groom you know, to raise the money that is um, required for Lobola. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the groom himself, if you're working and you've been saving, you'll, you know, you'll obviously use your money that you've been saving mm. to pay for, for Lobola. But mind you, remember, you don't know how much Correct. honor you're going to have to pay. Correct. So you hope that you've saved enough. enough. But also another maybe a caveat to this conversation is that with Lobola, you don't have to pay the full amount on the day. Okay. So for example, that if they thought. say, you know, the girl's family, the bride's family, if they say we want to be honored with, let's say 50,000 rand. Okay. There's no going rate, by the way. It's okay. just, it's just depending it's on how, it's just a number. It depends how you negotiate. Let's assume that it's 50,000 rand. So in that 50,000 rand, if you had only saved 25,000 rand, you pay whatever you had saved and then you have to go back the second time to, to complete um, the rest of the, the balance that remains so that you pay 50,000 rand. However, again, in some instances, because in our culture we say you don't necessarily have to finish Lobola, you don't need to finish paying Lobola, oh. you can still have a balance remaining. It just depends on the bride's family. Okay. Some families, they will require you to pay the full amount before the girl officially becomes yours. I think that's so, fair. Yeah, so you have to obviously then go back, yes. raise more money. So yes. the remaining balance, you raise it. You then arrange a date again. You go back to the <gasps> bride's family and you say, okay, bride's family, I had this much that I still needed to pay. I am now ready to pay the remaining balance. And here's the remaining balance. Mm. Can I have crystal now? Mm. Other families will say, it's okay. You've paid this percentage. You still have this balance remaining, but it's okay, you guys, because you love each other and you want to start a family, we're giving you our blessing to go ahead and get married mm. and just be official. My um, goodness. Two things comes to mind. Okay. First thing is, <laughs> thank God I was married in America. <laughs> Thank God, thank God Almighty. 
My lord! Oh, man! <laughs> so that's up to you, brother. You did it. It's a process. You Ricky. did it. 19 yeah. years ago. It is ago, a process. You did it. But it's then the process. second thought comes to mind is you're going to have to do this three times. Like three times, you're going to be sitting in a negotiating situation. Yeah. And some man, some random guy, is going to want to have your daughter. Yes. In their family, you're gonna have to negotiate, like. Correct. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, it takes a strong person, a strong father, yes. to even be in that situation. Like, I couldn't even imagine trying to put a number, right? And to your point, like, there's no, there's no like say so, mm -hmm. right? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's the my last question on it? Because mm -hmm. I'm just curious, because I know <laughs> what I would do in this situation. But like, what's the highest? a little bowl of price that you're aware of? So, for example, in Guazulu Natal, because okay. they're still very traditional, okay. if, if you marry um, in the monarch, rest assured you're going to pay a lot of cows. A lot of cows. I mean, okay. even over 50 cows. And you assume that maybe if one cow costs 6,000 rands, Ooh, then you multiply, that, right you multiply that either by 50 or 100, depending how many cows they want. So, so as I said, that there's different things that they look at okay. and they put on the table that will determine the price that you have to honor them with. Wow. Because if a girl is still a virgin, mm -hmm. that matters. Mm -hmm. If a girl is working, that matters. If she's even well qualified, she's got a degree or masters or even MBA, PhD, that matters. So depending what this rose, this lady that you saw from this family, what she has and has acquired over the years and the way she has carried herself, that matters. And that can then shoot up the price. Oh, we're gonna have a conversation on this. So we're gonna have to have another talk where we talk about the marriage process here in South Africa. Yeah. Uh, you know, cause it's it's cool, but then even to know. So this is the part that I know mm -hmm. that wasn't said of how the labola isn't the only part of the process mm -hmm. of a man and a woman coming together in a union. Mm -hmm. Like there's other parts that may or may not take place. Mm -hmm. So even to be able to dive into that, I think is gonna be a beautiful thing, right? Mm -hmm. And eye-opening as well, because I mean, even with people coming over here, mm -hmm. right? Moving over mm -hmm. and they're not married as men, but then come over and see the beauty that South Africa has to offer and wants to get married. They need to know. You they know need what to know. Like, they need to know. The guys need to, they know, need to know. I'm thinking about my uncle right now. I'm, yeah. thinking, I'm talking wrong, but I'm thinking specific. <laughs> my uncle, you need to know. He's single, yeah. right? But great man. And at the same time, like, you know, at the end of the day, he doesn't want, right? I'm, now I'm telling all this business. But mm -hmm. let me just back out for him specifically by saying, at the end of the day, nobody wants to be by themselves forever. Yeah. Right? And so, or given certain circumstances or mm -hmm. agreements within themselves, mm -hmm. and they make that decision. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, the ones that want to get married, like, you need to know yes. what you're going to come in contact with as a man coming over to South Africa, looking and glazing, looking. You need to know the cost associated, right? Because even my thought is like, there's no age limit that would stop the necessity to pay the Ebola mm -hmm. or to do the other parts, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know what I'm saying? You gotta know how to give respect where it's due and to give mm -hmm. honor where honor mm -hmm. is due. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you need to know. So we're gonna have to have a whole conversation yep. with that because so, we have to inform these people. Yeah, so to our American brothers or um, even brothers from other you know parts of the world, yep. if you come to South Africa and you want to marry a South African girl, just be prepared that you will have to pay Lobola. That's it. Again, pay in inverted commas. It's yes. just to honor the family. It's honor. Yeah, the girl's family. You're just honoring them and, and just showing appreciation that they're giving away their daughter to you. So just be prepared for that. Be prepared. You can't say you didn't know. Because now you know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but even now, let's talk about food a little bit. We're going to talk about okay. food, then we're going to talk about the exciting thing that is to come up in the life of Safiso. And so, as we were talking and discussing, riding and gliding, I would like to say, yep. talk about Soweto trip, mm -hmm. we started talking about food. Yes. And the various foods, things that you say I have to try that I've yet to try and experience that I've yet to experience, yes. right? So even just with that, 
Um, what are like some of your go to? Let's just talk ethnic group now, right? Mm -hmm. What is some like go to Zulu dishes that you're even reminded of that you had growing up? So, I mean, growing up in Johannesburg, um, I ate a lot of pap. I mean, pap cuts across most ethnic groups okay. um, in, uh, in, in, in South, South Africa. Africa. Yeah. Whether you Sutu or you uh, Tswana, Venda, mm. they also eat pap. It just okay. gets prepared differently. Oh. Um, I know that you guys have got grits. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Estate. We remix them things. So, so grits is like <laughs> soft pap. Yes. It's like a bit wet. Yes. So we do have um, our babies in the north in Limpopo. Mm -hmm. their, their pap is a bit wet. Oh. In, in us, in, in Zulu culture, mm -hmm. um, our pap is a bit hard. Okay. So it's still mealy meal. Yes. It's just that it's prepared differently. Okay. Okay. And Zulus, I mean, we, we love our meat. Yes. Um, yes. You know, back in the day, when you were rich, you would have, you know, cattle uh, and other, you know, animals. Livestock. Livestock, yeah. Mm -hmm and you slaughter and we eat the entire animal okay remember we spoke about the smiley yeah 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 yeah, yeah. a sheep's head right or a cow's head uh -huh. we eat an animal from the head to the hooves huh. so we eat everything so yes. as Zulus we love meat okay um as i was saying to you when we we're taking a drive um in soweto that we mm -hmm. need to try shisa nyamas yes yes so yes, so that. our daily case is especially zulus it's 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 pap it's meat a lot of meat we okay. eat a lot of meat um, I know with the with the Limpopo um, ethnic groups like your uh, Tsonga, your, your your Venda, they eat more pani worms, which I told you about. Yeah, 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 yeah. So those ones are quite interesting because okay. in your head you're thinking these are worms, yes. but the way they get prepared, because I've tasted them, I've eaten them, and they're not that bad. Okay. You just need to rem remove this thought in your head that you're eating a worm, okay. and just try it. And by the way, worms are very uh, high in protein. They're very healthy. Okay. Try them because the way to, to win us as a nation is to try and immerse yourself in our culture right. through language yes. and also through eating our, our food. Yeah. So there's different places that I'll still take you to within the townships yeah. so that we try um, you know, different delicacies. Mm. We spoke about tripe. Tripe is one of my favorites. Oh, it's one of my favorites. Really? However, you can also prepare it differently. Okay. You know? Um, we can try maybe one place where you eat tripe. Okay. You don't need to finish the whole bowl if you can't, but just try it. And it will, I'll take you to a different place where they prepare tripe in a different way. You try that dish as well. Because that way, obviously your palate will start getting used to, um, to tripe. I know that you, you're thinking, oh my goodness, how am I going to do this? But you will be able to. You know, it's an acquired taste, yes. but eventually you'll be able to. You're in South Africa now, so you must eat what we eat. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I better say so pressure you, like I did you, in the car. You're not going to die, Ricky. I, I'm not going to die. Mm -hmm. I believe I will give it a try. Mm -hmm. But I think more than anything, I'll try yours. Like, I will order my That's own fine. dish. No, it's fine. I don't, don't, don't want to be, be, be wasteful, right? Yes. But at the same time, man, and it's so you're talking to a person. So just hear mm -hmm. my heart as I hear, as I hear <laughs> Okay, as I understand, my Zulu brothers and sisters, meat is very prominent and it's a part yes. of the the meal. However, myself, I was getting away from meat. Like I was yes, going to go to vegetables yes. and light fish, but not really just vegetables and fruits. And so now coming over here to South Africa, mm -hmm. I'm recognizing that the meat here is a whole lot better than it is back in the mm -hmm. States. So mm -hmm. it gives me the freedom and the thoughts that mm. I can give it a try again so yeah. even as of recent I mm. had a steak which I think it was like my second steak mm. in maybe three or four years so like mm. I'm gradually getting I won't mm. even do like minced beef right now mm. so you know I'm, I'm hearing what is being said and I'm rationalizing the thought of and just by the way there's also chicken feet I know I've seen chicken feet so we need to try the chicken no, feet no no we no, must try the chicken no. feet it's white meat, which is your delicacy. I do love white so, meat. So, so, we can, we, so we can try chicken feet as well. I'll watch you. That's, that's you know what I'm saying? It's a limit. It has to be a limit. Yeah. Because I raise chickens, right? And I've seen chickens walk mm -hmm. and live life. And they don't care what they step on. <laughs> they don't care what they walk But on. you clean it just like with tripe. Okay. We clean it thoroughly. Mm. Because these are intestines. So... Yeah. Uh, you need to make sure that there's, mm. you know, that there's that there's no leftover still within the meat before you cook it. You clean mm. it thoroughly, 
you clean, 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 clean it, and then when you cook it, you boil it first. Mm. And uh, so, 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 don't worry about the cleanliness of the animal. Just like with pork, I mean, we eat pork. So um, I don't. There's the the perceptions yes. that pork is uh, mm -hmm. is a dirty animal, mm -hmm. but we still eat it anyway. Yeah. Um, so even with uh, chicken feet, they get cleaned, and uh, depending how they are prepared, you will enjoy them. Mm. But as I'm saying, Ricky, this is a challenge from me to you. Okay. You need to try some of these um, these delicacies. You know, I'm getting a little lightheaded. That is how you will win us as South Africans. If you learn the language, remember we said we're going to teach you yes, Zulu. Yes, yep, yep. I'll also teach you a That's bit of true. Sutu. Okay. But you also need to try the food. <sighs> this is rough. It's the thought. You have to entrench yourself in yeah. our cultures. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I agree. I agree and I agree, right? And... I'm even so it's it's coming both sides, right? Mm -hmm. It's coming from you. Then I'm it's coming to learn. it's coming from my daughter too, Rain, mm -hmm. right? Rain mm -hmm. has taken on this persona of she's South African and we not South African. <laughs> so much so <laughs> that you know we started oh, Tasty Tuesdays, right? Yes, yes. And uh how could you die? Rain is amazing. We aren't videoing Tasty Tuesdays because it's it's so many parts of it just yeah. now. Yeah. However, um with it, she said for her day, because she gets to pick. So mm -hmm. Tasty Tuesdays is a concept where Rain gets to pick what mm -hmm. we eat for Tuesday. Okay. And so just the other day, Rain was saying to Crystal, hey, I want to have street food. Mm -hmm. I want street food for mm -hmm. Tasty Tuesday. And, you know, right into school, she'll see people selling things and whatnot. Yes. And she's like, hey, I want to buy some food from them because yes. they're selling these things for their family. And so mm -hmm. I want to put money in their hands so they can provide for the family. So Rain is saying all of these mm -hmm. things in the car. Mm -hmm. But you can't help but to be a parent <laughs> thinking like, man, that's, that's great. great. Yes. That's honorable, yeah. Rain. That, oh, my gosh. Yes. Like, I commend you for yeah. having such a thought yeah. as that. But then on the other side. Mm -hmm. Me. So let me just talk about me right now. <laughs> I'm a germaphobe. Like I, I will willing to admit yes, yes. and you know, I won't say I have O C D, but I'm very clean mm -hmm. conscious. Yes. And so yes. I do a lot of things with that in mind. And so when I see street food, like the hairs on the back of my mm -hmm. neck already start mm -hmm. standing up because I'm like, where is you the water? The where are we washing is this? It dirty? Particles yeah. covered from the street. Like I don't see mm -hmm. all of these things, right? And so much so, like in the States, I don't even eat from food trucks, but yet food mm -hmm. trucks are pretty much clean, right? Mm -hmm. They have, you know, boom, 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 boom. Yeah. So I'm like that extreme. Yeah. So, you know, I'm working through being more open. I will say that. Yeah. I'll give things a try. I trust you, Sophie. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things, I'm going to say this last thing, and okay. I'm, I'm going to let you jump in with this thought. Mm -hmm. One of the things I pray for while being here is mm -hmm. that, God, would you help me to have godly connections with people mm -hmm. here? Like, may all the connections that we have May they be godly and may they be helpful and beneficial mm -hmm. to me. Because, I mean, you can go anywhere in this world mm -hmm. and the thought of somebody taking advantage of you could limit your ability to meet people mm -hmm. and interact with people. And Because mm -hmm. if you're always thinking somebody's trying to get something from yeah. you or take from you, yeah. then, you know, you'll shelter yourself. Correct. But yeah. I don't want to be like that. Yes. We're not like that. We're people, people. And at the same time, so I'm thankful for the connection that God has allow for us to come yes, together yes. with and so it's a pleasure. Yeah, yeah and with rain i'm on street food so what did we do crystal obliged there was a guy selling corn okay had the corn <laughs> out and he said i want some corn Okay. Crystal, yeah. being the mother that she is, the loving mother yeah. and the wife that she is, she rolls on the window, calls the guy over. He had a, it's like in a green mesh type thing, oh, yes, and yes, it's yes, four yes, in yes. there. Hey, I would like to buy this. How much is it? Yes. She's telling me the story because I'm not in the car. Yes. The guy says 50 ring. Yes. She says, okay. She, in her mind, she thought it was a little bit too mm -hmm. high, mm -hmm. but she says, okay, because we're mm -hmm. here and what, mm -hmm. what do we do now? Yes. So she pays the 50 ring. She brings it home. She cooks it. Yeah. Cooking it and eating it. They eat it first because yes. I already told you my limitations. Mm -hmm. And um, Crystal's like, first Ricky says, this doesn't taste good. This is yeah. nasty. This is disgusting. <laughs> and so Ricky, he's usually spot on. So, you know, yeah, I'm like, oh, okay. Because yeah, yeah. he used to lie. Yeah. Rain's like, mm, it just tastes different, you know. Yes, Crystal yes. bites into it. Oh, it's just corn. First bite. Yeah. Second bite, she bites and was like, mm, this is chalky. Yes. I'm thinking chalky. I've grown corn before yes, in the States, yes. and I know before all the starches and the corn yes. comes together, it will be chalky yes. before it becomes juicy and things like that. Yeah. So I say, Crystal, that corn's not done. So all that to be, all that to say, yes. I'm going to try some things out with you, because yep. I believe that you know what's what and what's, what's not. 
And what's that price too high? Let me ask that. Crystal, she posted a video on TikTok, but I need to know. Yeah. It was 50 grand too much for four. It was four yeah. uh, ears of corn, what we would call in the States. Look, it sounds about right. It's okay. just that it's a bit tricky to determine whether it's the right price or not. Because okay. if you're buying from a street vendor, yeah. you have the opportunity to, to negotiate. Okay. Unlike when you go to your pick and pay yep. or shop right, where mm. the price is fixed and you can see the price. Yep. If you're buying street food, especially whether it's the traffic lights or, or wherever where yeah, you got yeah. the corn from right. um, because yeah they do sell there as well uh -huh. so so you can then you know decide no no, no i'm not happy with that price can okay. you just lower it a bit or you can say this is all i have i've only got 40 rands okay. or i've only got 35 rands and then you negotiate with the vendor and then they'll tell you whether it's okay and uh -huh. then it's, it's, it's like a bartering system okay so so 50 rands for four uh, pieces of corn it sounds about right okay um but because i i mean i haven't bought corn you know from from a street vendor in, in a while okay I, I wouldn't necessarily know and there's two types of corn that they usually sell on the okay. street it's the one that you're talking about the green yes. one yes but then they also prepare another one on an open hot coal yes yes which becomes brown uh -huh. um uh -huh. and, and because of the flame because of the flame the so yes mm -hmm. that one so those are the two different corns that you can you know buy from 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 street vendors yes so what we can do is we can try both uh, me and you mm. and remember um you have to try these things. No, I mean, it's trust. The There's car. trust. I've already laid it out. I have you trust. You can try it just so. once, just once. Yes. You, you will see how you know your palate does. Yeah. Um, and then we try other things as well. Yeah. Um, you know, we can try pup um, yes. and meat from yes. from street vendors as well. Mm. And and we can we can then see um, how that goes. We're gonna try it out. My my trust is this Safiso. You know, if something go wrong, y'all already knew who I was doing. Because it'll be no video. By the way, yes, <clears throat> one of your subscribers okay. asked that we, or rather me, I take you to a place called Guamai Mai. Okay. Guamai Mai is it's it's basically street vendors selling meat and and other things. Okay. Um, but since you spoke about you know being iffy with germs and stuff. Maybe I'll spare you that one, but I'll okay. take you to other places as well. But I would love to take you there as well, just yeah. so that we you, can see it. You, you see it, you okay. feel the vibe and you know, how yeah. the street vendors um, you know, are selling, preparing their meat yes. and what the environment looks like. It's quite a vibe mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. when you go there. Okay. So as I said, I'll, I'll get you to try different things. Yes. Whatever you're not comfortable with, obviously you, you, you don't have to do. Yes. But um, I'll try and get you to experience as much as you can yeah, yeah, yeah. of South Africa, the South African culture, mm -hmm. um, and hopefully some of the stuff you can even document so that yeah. um, you know your, your viewers, yes. you know, the audience can see no, no. what yeah. you are doing while you're in South mm -hmm. Africa, the things that you are experiencing yes. while you are in this country. Yeah. And the, uh, and the yeah, taxi. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They and did, the, you saw and that the taxi. Too. Yeah. And, and the taxi have you experience. have you rode in a taxi before yeah i mean when you grow up you grow up especially if, at, at your house if your parents don't have a car yes sir the cheapest and the most affordable form of transport um, is taxi okay um you know and also with buses and trains we don't have them everywhere yes and they don't terminate in every destination right whereas taxis pretty much go almost everywhere okay so it's the easiest and the most affordable form of transport so okay. yes i've been in a taxi before okay so you and i can also do a taxi experience yeah. okay. um, at some point when you're ready okay. we take a taxi from one point to another point yeah. and then we take a taxi back to where we we originated from oh, just so that you can get the taxi feeling Ooh. and the experience within the taxi because i already get the, the taxi, taxi experience on the road you've seen taxis driving beside you in front of you behind you what? now you will be in the taxi oh. and you'll experience it i mean these are the type of things that you need to try while you're in this country i agree and, yeah, and, and, and and you can tell a story and say yes. guys when i was in south africa this is what i did this is yeah. what i tried yeah. it was an exhilarating feeling you know being in that taxi mm -hmm. i tried this street food i tried that i tried that you know it will okay. be it will be great to have that yeah um you know experience experience i agree mm -hmm. i agree no i'm open to it like you know as i see various suggestions in the comments or whatnot i'm always like Ugh! right initially because it's outside of the norm right so there's that initial hill that you have to climb over or even like skydiving so here's a question for you when did you start eating mexican food 
because tacos are not indigenous that or they, they are not an American delicacy. That is true. But you are willing to try. Yep. Today, yep. most Americans love tacos. And that is true. That's a, that's a Mexican dish and other Mexican dishes. That is true. So it just takes time it to be something. firstly introduced. Correct. And then gradually you start getting used to, you know, that type of food. Yeah. So while you're here in South Africa, some of the things we'll try, they'll be a bit awkward in the beginning. Yes. But as time goes, if you continue just eating those things yeah. and consuming them, your palate will then start accepting, um, mm. you know, that, that type of food. My lord. So tell me <laughs> one thing that is, you know, said indigenous to South Africa's cuisine, South African cuisine that you don't eat. Whew. I eat almost everything. Eh? Oh can, man, okay. I'm Zulu, but I mean, as I said, I mean, I even eat your mapani worms. I okay. eat pork. Okay. However it's prepared, I eat uh, sheep's head, okay. cow's head. The hooves, okay. um, you know, cow heels. I eat tripe, <laughs> liver, um, cow's heart. I eat everything. Okay. Chicken. I also eat uh, chicken feet as well, and the chicken head. Um, even with pork, I mean, mm -hmm. I eat uh, pig's head as well. It's quite nice. Again, it depends how you prepare it. Mm. How you prepare it. I hear but you. I eat everything. Okay. Uh, I'm a meat eater, okay. um, but I'm also very conscious, you know, what I eat um, when I eat protein, okay. but I eat almost everything. I'm okay. not very picky when it comes to eating. Gotcha. And so, in, see, you're so good. Being a picky eater as myself, mm -hmm. help me to know. Because I oftentimes don't accept invitations to certain places because I don't want to be disrespectful. Yeah. Is it disrespectful to be invited to, you know, a home and food is prepared and I'm looking at everything and I don't see anything that I'm comfortable with eating? Is it disrespectful to say, no, I'm okay, I'm not going to eat anything after being invited, invited to a home? In our culture, it is. So, I thought so. So, so, okay. so, so, so when you were invited to the Lobola, yes. if you came there and you said, nah, I'm not going to eat this, I'm not going to eat that, we as a family take offense to that uh, because we prepared all this food for all our guests. Yes. We expect that you will, you know, you will enjoy with us and partake. Mm. But if you say no, you know, we take offense to that, that we took all this effort, you know, preparing this for you and you come here and you say no. So, so it's, it's always advisable and wise that you try something. Okay. Even if it's just a little bit, even if you don't finish, but do try something, you know, okay. just to show that I appreciate that you took all this effort as a family okay. or as a host to prepare this dish and I'm going to dive in, but maybe you might not finish, but at least you did try. Okay. So just take note of that. Okay. So you don't buy food and eat before you come to the event. That's what I would usually do. No. And even in the States I would do because you don't you never know what environment you gotta Correct. come in Correct. or walk into and if one was to say, Oh no, I'm okay, I've eaten before yeah. I came, then okay, cool, right? That's what it is. But I do understand culturally that's different. And so I do want to be respective and respect of of the culture that, you know, I may walk into. And so mm -hmm. knowing that I'll, I'll prepare myself and so okay so just maybe to to add on yes sir you know in modern times people use venues um, yes to do their to functions host. to host yes. so sometimes they will confirm on the invite you know what the menu will be yes, and sir. stuff um, sometimes they do right sometimes they don't correct you just get a surprise when you get there yeah. and you realize oh okay this is what we're gonna be eating but sometimes when other people, you know, have an event that they invite you to, they sometimes confirm, you know, what food, um, you know, will be, will be dished out at, mm. at the event. So that you prepare yourself that, okay, so at that event, um, this is what we'll be, we'll be consuming. Consuming. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm preparing myself right now. You know, I'm just, it's all in the preparation. You need to keep an open mind, Ricky. You are in Africa now, so you must keep an open mind. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to take that advice. And just by the way, going back to your comment about cleanliness. Okay. Do you know what happens at the back um, in a normal restaurant, in, mm. a, in, in their kitchen? Do you, do you, do you no, know what you happens? Don't. You don't. You're just prayerful and hopeful and wishful at the same time. So, so keep that open mind then when you mm. eat our traditional food. Yes, sir. Because even in a traditional hotel, or rather not hotel, but restaurant, Yes. You, you don't know what's happening in the you kitchen. Don't. They could be dropping that piece of meat on the ground, dust it off, put yeah. it on your plate. You don't know. Right. Um, but you consume hoping 
that this is clean, it's been mm -hmm. well prepared, there are no germs. Right. Um, so similar right. to our food, you just need to keep that open mind and trust that whoever prepared the food took care mm -hmm. of making sure that there are no germs and the food is clean and it's good to be consumed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, <laughs> sir. Mm. Mm. Well said, Sapiso. Well said, my brother. Now, speaking of your name, right, I happen to know of some endeavors that the great Sapiso uh, will look to do. You know, mm -hmm. I don't want to put a time stamp mm -hmm. on it. However, I'm excited about it. So I want to talk about it even before the world gets to even partake in it actually taking place. However, maybe it's a heard it here first. Maybe it's mm -hmm. a, you know, an announcement to the world. But at the same time, you gave me the opportunity to go into the townships mm -hmm. uh, safely, safely mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Peacefully of Alexandria and to Soweto. And in doing so, we had a great conversation. Mm -hmm. You were able to educate me while showing me um, take, you know, various streets and things like mm -hmm. that. But then also show me, you know, there's this, there's that there, so forth and so on. It's all in the video, mm -hmm. right? It's all in mm -hmm. the video. In it all, after it, you said to yourself or said to your wife, or maybe your wife said to you, maybe God said to you, I don't know, that, hey, maybe I could do this on a regular. Maybe I could take people to the townships or take them to try different cuisine and try different fruits and things like that. But like, talk to me, talk to me, like, <laughs> talk to me. We had a good time. Yes. Granted, we, we did, time, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I think that's what happens when two great people come together. Yes. We have good times. Yes. But even following with it, you said, okay, maybe I can do that. So what's, what's next? So I've already set it up. Wow. Um, I've already set it up. So if you're a visitor and you'd like to do township tours, huh. um, you can mail me because I've already got an email address. <clears throat> It'll be and down I'm already below. operating. Because Ricky, I, I have done this before. You were okay. not the first one. Yes. Um, I've done this before when I've got colleagues that are coming from different provinces. Mm -hmm. I drive them around, you know, giving them different experiences in the townships and really narrate the history of different townships yep. and take them to different interesting places, yes. get them to eat different cuisines yes. um, so that they can experience Johannesburg, mm. um, even, you know, colleagues that were coming from other countries that yeah. I worked with. Yeah. Um, you know, they'll come here, I'll drive them around, show them places and mm. so forth. So if people, you know, from uh, your channel, the yes. subscribers that are coming, whether it's from the US or any other country outside of uh, South Africa, yes and they'd like to get in touch with me so that I can uh, take them around the townships, they can contact me Let's on go. info at ubutrigogroup.co.za. I'll say that again, it's info at ubutrigogroup.co.za, but I'll ask Ricky to put it um, in the comment section so yes. that you've got the, the, the spelling correctly. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you're coming to South Africa, then uh, I can be able to then, uh, you know, take you around and just show you our beautiful country um, so that you can appreciate this beauty and what it offers or not and what the country offers really yes mm. man i love that i love so here's one of my like passions the things mm. that excites me and ignites me daily is when i come in contact with people and you know through the various exchange mm -hmm. and then out of it there's a birthing of something that's been within them or even mm. to your case something that you've been doing that mm -hmm. now you can see it from another light but then it's activated, right? Yeah. There's action and that then proceeds after that activation. And that's why I'm so excited right now, right? And so I was excited this whole conversation to get to this point, <laughs> though we had great conversation. <laughs> now y'all know where I was at mentally this whole time. Yeah. Because now people definitely want that capability and mm -hmm. ability to be able to be with somebody that is trustworthy and that is mm -hmm. safe and that can take them to show them what's really mm -hmm. going on, right? Yes, yeah. there are tours that you can do mm -hmm. that will give you a, you know, high level type mm -hmm. experience, right? I've done the hop on hop on yes, tour yes. that, you know, showed and went through Soweto. That was mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. However, the one I did with you was definitely more personal mm -hmm. and informative. And mm -hmm. I felt like I was amongst the people, yeah. right? Being in that double decker bus, I feel like I'm high. You're just a tourist. I'm a spectacle, right? Mm -hmm. But then you get, mm -hmm. you go into a smaller van mm -hmm. to go into away so but I mean I still felt like you know what I'm saying I felt like I don't know I felt like the animal 
in a zoo, right? Mm -hmm. I felt like, you know, though I'm here to see Soweto, I felt like Soweto was looking at me. It just yeah. felt weird. But riding with you, driving with you, hearing from you, I felt like, oh man, like, okay. That's what's going on over here. Mm. That's what this is. This is where this is. And so I say all that to say, like, I not only want that for others, mm -hmm. but I'm excited for you all to get that experience because it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be beneficial. And I can only see that mm. ability growing, right? Yes. We're going to start with touring the townships. Then we're mm. going to do some food. Then yes. we're going to do some shopping, right? Yes. And the experience will go grow. Correct. The packages will grow because Correct. the need and the desires of the people will force you, in essence, yes. to say, okay, I can do that. Yes. I can do that. I'll add that. Yes. And to see where it started and how it started, but to even foresee how big it could be, mm. it excites me, yes. right? And then as well, knowing that you have children, it's a legacy project as Correct. well that's being birthed right before our eyes so correct no nah, man i'm excited like man yes yeah, thank you but also thank you ricky for, yeah. for giving me the platform you know to you know to showcase what i'm able for to do sure. just take you around the township um educate you yes. around the history of the townships how we as black people ended up living in townships yeah and being grouped in these spaces yeah and not being in the city right um, but yes so close, close. That yet so close part. that was the part yet so close remember i told you that we were the labor you mm -hmm. know for for the white people Correct. we were in the cities yeah so each and every city or town usually has a township next to it because the labor people that are the laborers used to go to that town to work there mm -hmm. and then at a certain time which was six o'clock because we had a pass law mm -hmm. you had to go back to the township yeah so you had to carry a pass yeah. just to be in town at a certain time even during the day, they would sometimes randomly stop you and wow. ask you, do you have a pass to be here? Yeah. So all that history, I would like to share it with uh, uh, you know, the international audience that yes. would love to visit South yeah. Africa. Yeah. So that we really unpack the history of South Africa and why we are where we are as a people mm -hmm. and where we've been and where we come from and how we even get to live in harmony today mm -hmm. as, as a people, whether you're white, whether you're uh, uh, black, uh, or of Asian um, descent, yes. you know, Indian yeah. or, or colored. I yeah. know it's a bit of a derog derogatory term in the okay. U.S., but okay. colored. Right. Um, all of us, different yes. races, yep. the way we were classified during yep. the, the apartheid, uh, time, the apartheid and regime. time mm -hmm. and regime and how we live together mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and in harmony. I mean, you asked earlier about civil wars and tensions. We live in harmony. Yeah. We don't have that. I mean, since you've been here, You've never seen any. I haven't. You've never any fights or anything never. like that. No, surprisingly, you've, even in the townships, right? Exactly. I, like I shared with you, I was expecting to see something, but I saw nothing. Nothing. Just because of how it's portrayed. Yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, our narrative is being told by other people. Correct. That is why when it lands in the West, it lands in a wrong way. Yes, sir. And a perception is created in the West about our country, mm -hmm. not only about South Africa, but you know, Africa in its entirety. Yes. yes. And you just have this jaded type of vision of this is what Africa looks like, this is what Africa is. Mm -hmm. And when you land here, mm -hmm. you become surprised and overwhelmed that mm -hmm. you know narrative that is, you know, in the in the US yes, and sir. you know, probably the rest of the you know the globe is that Africa is a dark continent, there's poverty. Mm -hmm. Um, people are uncivilized mm -hmm. and when you land here you become overwhelmed to see that we are civilized yeah. we live just like you live in the West mm -hmm. we wear the same clothing as you wear in the West yep. transportation I mean people have got cars we've Correct. got buses motorcycles. trains motorcycles mm -hmm. so 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 for us I think it's important to have these kind of platforms yes, to sir. really educate and inform yeah and change those narratives you know yes. in the West so that we create the appetite for people to want to come to the continent and yeah. visit mm -hmm. and maybe go beyond just visiting and come and stay here just like you know what you've done yes sir and you know when you live in this country you realize that it's very much different than any other part of the world mm. because as i said to you when we went to soita that in africa and in south africa in particular we are very communal yes community-based um you know living yes where we share things Mm -hmm. um, even as I said with languages 
um, that's, the, that's the community spirit. It's yes. very communal. We love to live with other people and living amongst people, helping each other and coexisting with other people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because we also understand the suffering that we suffered um, you know, back in the apartheid days. So yeah. we really look out for each other mm. um, as you know, uh, black people, but yes. also extending to, to other races as well because they are also South African. Right. So we live together in harmony mm. um, and like any other country, there might be challenges here and there, but mm -hmm. we, we're a beautiful country. Mm, yeah. That you all are. And even as you're talking, like I just am seeing people getting that information, getting that experience, getting that uh, knowledge and awareness of what and the beauty of South Africa, right? Like, yes, you can go to Santon, yes, you can go to Rosebank Waterfall, mm -hmm. and those places are great. However, when I was in the townships, I felt like I now was in South Africa, mm -hmm. right? Because I was in the vibes, I was within the flow, I was amongst the people. And mm -hmm. even as you were talking, I just started seeing how even, yes, we're gonna start, you're gonna start, and I say we, cause you know what I'm saying, it's, yes. it's a family, no, it's right? A we're gonna yeah. start in Johannesburg, mm -hmm. because that's where we are, however, there are townships in Cape Town. There are yes. townships in Durban, I believe, and yes. other provinces yes. within the country yes. of South Africa. So being able to have people doing tours there as well, right? Mm -hmm. They can go to the beach, but then they can get informed. Correct. And you know what I'm saying? It'd be yeah. a part of some soul uh, enterprises. You know, I don't know, right? We'll see what the name would be. But at the end of the day, yes. they'll be able to be a part of a safe space and a safe Correct. place where they're informed, they're encouraged, but then they're able to go back home, wherever that is, yeah. to be able to inform people of the truth, mm -hmm. to be able to change the narrative and change the perceptions that people have because you know as i was taught and understand things is that you can't argue with somebody who's had an experience with a bunch of information mm. like once they've seen it once they've experienced it once they've tasted the foods mm. or whatnot you, you can't argue with me no, to say this mm. is what this is no 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 no. Mm. i've seen it mm. i felt it i've experienced mm. it i stepped outside of my door and i've walked down the street yeah. and those people that person is mm. far more impactful going back to their place called home to inform the others of what's really going on here yes. in south africa so i'm excited yeah. right of course living here being here i know the beauty that is actually here and obviously want that for others as well yes. because we travel we as in people travel all around the world mm -hmm. however the continent of Africa is often overlooked mm. um, or skipped over when mm. traveling. However, I think now with the use of YouTube and social media, we're sharing and showing yes. what's really going on here. And with the help of great people like Safiso and others that are making this country great, others will come because they recognize it's safe here, there's fun here, there's opportunities here, and there's so many different things that you can do here. Mm. To your point, whether you want to go to the beach, nightlife, bowling, clubbing, hiking, right, skydiving, like skating. there's so many things. Skating, ice skating, ice skating like who would have thunk it? We, you could ice skate in a mall in Johannesburg. <laughs> Wait, what? Yes, like the opportunities are endless and I'm excited to be able to take part in them. And I'm excited as well yes. that I'm united with a great man like Safiso that you all had the opportunity to come in contact with today. And are there any things, any last things that you want to say to the people? And let me say this before you do, as you're thinking of those things, Y'all already know it's going to be a part two. It has to be a part two. Um, you know what I'm saying? I've seen the comments. Y'all say the episode's too long. So we're going to do a part two because there's so many things that we could talk about. Yes. And even as we talk, it's almost endless to the things that we can talk about because, you know what I'm saying? There's so many facets mm -hmm. of life that we yeah. can address things from. But if there were any closing words that you would like to say to the people, what would it be? So I'd just like to thank you, Ricky, for yes, the opportunity to, to come to, yeah. to your channel. Yes, sir. Um, to have this chat with you, a very frank and honest conversation with yes, you. Yes, sir. But at the same time, educating your audience, mm -hmm. um, especially those that don't know our history yes. and what South Africa is about. Yes. Because for me, this is more of positioning my country and promoting my country. Absolutely. Because people need to know what's happening in South Africa. Yes. Um, they shouldn't necessarily only rely on the media, mm -hmm. you know, the traditional media, but they should hear from the people on the ground. And I'm I glad am. that you are also open yes. to trying some of the things. And you're I still am. open I to am. trying more. 
Yes. And those things that you try, you can then document and also share them yes, on sir. your channel. Yeah. So that we really change these narratives mm -hmm. and these negative perceptions mm -hmm. about our country, but also Africa um, as a continent. Yes. That, you know, we are people and we are friendly people. We love um, Americans or any other person that comes from any other country. We will treat you like a guest. In fact, we'll treat you like one of our own. And that's true. We'll treat you like one of our own. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, how we, that's how we are. Yes, sir. Again, the term Ubuntu, we live it. We don't just say it, but we live it. Right. And through our actions, you, you really get to experience Ubuntu. Yeah, yeah. No, well said, well said, great people. Great man. And <laughs> to you, great people, as you can see, why I honor and am thankful for the relationship and the friendship that God has brought together in this connection with my brother, Safiso. And so, all that to say, great people fun times good times ahead definitely gonna look out for part two as well as this is separate so we have part two that we're gonna do and we're gonna have a video talk about the marriage process because we need to inform some people but at the end of the day we love you all we appreciate you all definitely if you have anything you want to add or say in the comment section below do so and we will definitely gonna look out for it his details that you can arrange various tours with him will be in the description below and uh you know be on a lookout for him to be in a province right not just in Johannesburg but in a province near you until next time great people we love you all we appreciate you all peace